Hello everyone, this is Bicycle Touring Talk edition number 92. I am George Schlackegg. The one, one, one only. only. We're in July of 2017 when I was in the middle of cycling across Canada on my touring bike. It was Sunday the 16th when I got up pretty early at Lands End Park near Tobermory, Ontario. After taking a four minute shower for the price of 25 cents, all the suitable change I had, I made coffee and had salami sandwiches for breakfast. The couple I had shared my campsite with were up too and let me use their electrical cooker to boil my water. After breakfast I packed up right away and started my ride down toward Highway 6 South. The road started out with a great shoulder that was wide enough to provide a safe riding environment. But unfortunately this didn't last for long. Look at the shoulder. It's funny eh, the road is without cracks but the shoulder is not. Then the weather also became a concern once again. It's good for cycling but it looks so cloudy that I'm actually wondering how far I'm gonna get before it rains but maybe there won't be any rain. I got to about 40 kilometers under very cloudy skies and the rain started to fall. It was light at first so I didn't bother putting my rain jacket on. I knew it would just trap the moisture inside and get me wet that way. Yeah, I got 40 kilometers done and now it looks like this. Rain again. It was almost perfect timing when I found a picnic shelter at a travel information center in Ferndale. I made chili for lunch and by the time I sat down to eat, it was pouring hard. Fortunately, it was just a short, heavy shower. Ironically, just minutes before, the lady in the office had told me that it wasn't supposed to rain according to the forecast. Made it out of the rain before it really uh, got sketchy. And I managed to cook a pot of chili here under a sheltered uh, you know, a picnic table. So. <laughs> Like, please, weather, just, just get better, you know? I don't want to have to, like, run away from the rain all the time and, and look, like, where I could find shelter just in case. I just want a, a few days or, you know, hope, hopefully more than that, where I don't have to worry about the weather, where it's just summer. Summer, yes, it's summer, it's July mid-July and we get this. After lunch I rode for a few kilometers with my rain jacket on. The wind and the moisture had cooled me off but after climbing a few minor hills I built up a sweat and took it off again. The wind was helping me move at a pretty good speed. I reached Wyerton in the afternoon and decided to stop for coffee and internet connection. The Tim Hortons was extremely busy and it almost seemed like a big waste of time standing in line. But once seated in there with my coffee and cookie, it allowed me to use the internet and book a room for myself and Barbara for when she would arrive in Toronto. I also found a potential bike for her online. See, we had planned to cycle together for a while, but Barbara wasn't going to bring her bike on the plane with her, so we had to find a used bike or a loaner. The ride continued under cloudy skies, but there was no rain. The road had a very narrow shoulder. It took me through several smaller communities before I arrived in Owen Sound. There was a daily accommodation challenge to solve, but first I had to get something to eat. McDonald's was on my right, so I pulled in there and ordered a burger. I practically inhaled that burger within two minutes. McDonald's doesn't really satisfy when you're on a bike tour, but you'll find one in almost any little town. I had an ice cream cone for dessert. 
I also found out where the nearest ATM was and a park with camping facilities. I ended up at Harrison Park and met a group of people with bicycles who had already set up tents in an overflow area where camping was $20 a night. It seemed reasonable, especially since hot showers were included. I set up my tent and then it was almost dark. After my shower, I went straight to bed. You remember me talking about suffering from a cold in the previous episodes? Amazingly, my cold was completely gone. The tent was completely dry when I woke up the next morning, but I took my time getting out of Harrison Park. It allowed me to enjoy another warm shower and take over the picnic table the group of cyclists had left behind a short while earlier. I made macaroni and stew for breakfast along with instant coffee. Yeah, here's the problem with uh, some of the paid camping spots. Uh, I paid 20 bucks to have access to shower and a picnic table and stuff and uh, I'm having breakfast and there's Mr. Earmuffs with the John Deere cutting the grass and uh, it's quite noisy. Once I got going I went downtown Owen Sound first, which was the way I had arrived. Somehow that got me lost, but the good thing was that I found a Walmart. I was pretty much out of food, so this was the perfect opportunity to stock up. Besides shopping, I stopped in at the McDonald's for a quick dollar drink and to use the internet. I found Highway 6 South by asking around, but once I was on it the ride was easy, except for some really long and relatively steep hills. The weather still didn't look fantastic, but eventually the clouds broke up. By the time I reached a small village by the name Durham, the sun was very intense. When I stopped to put on some sunscreen, I noticed that it had disappeared. Had it fallen out of my pannier, the netting on the side, or had somebody borrowed it? I found a Foodland store and invested $9 for a new tube. This time I put it into a more hidden pocket in my pannier. There was a small conservation area on the south side of Durham where I stopped for lunch. I must admit that at this point my story is a little bit inaccurate because there is no conservation area in Durham. It is in Dornoch. Those places are 15 kilometers apart so forgive me for this error. I was just in time to grab the best picnic table before several families arrived to go swimming in the little pond. I was tempted to do the same thing but decided to move on after eating my lunch. The route along Highway 6 was vaguely familiar to me as I had driven it a few times with my transport truck many years earlier.
it seemed like some of the smaller towns like Mount Forest had grown since then. I stopped one more time for a coffee and then ended up in Fergus. There was a huge Walmart Supercenter which was perfect to use the bathroom, fill up my water bottles and buy some more snacks. I realized that it was almost getting dark. The search for a camping spot was on. It didn't seem like I was going to find one until I asked someone at a small shell station. Apparently there was a forest behind the arena, just up a hill, that was designated for camping. I got there just in time to set up my tent in the fading daylight without worrying too much about the perfect spot. I was pretty sure I was going to be safe and be left alone here for the night. And it seemed like it was free too. Once the tent was set up, I went to bed right away. Well folks, this was the evening before the day I had booked a room in Mississauga close to Pearson Airport. Barbara was going to arrive there early in the morning on the 19th. I couldn't wait to see her. But there were challenges. Like getting to the airport and then of course finding a suitable bike for her. I'll tell you more about it in the next episode. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this one and consider following the buy me a coffee link in the description. It is a very effective way to support my little YouTube channel. Thank you.